uh, yeah, app is a common word, so we have heard about a lot of apps. Maybe an Android app, a web app, Scantina, Windows app, and cloud native apps. And uh, say for the uh, last two, four or five years, this cover app is gaining momentum. And now we are also going to, going, I mean, we are also uh, going to see the Teams app, which is also a developing right? as a this power app. So, but, but this power app is a kind of established uh, solution for Microsoft. And, uh, uh, and also a lot of uh, solutions, custom apps are being built on the Power App platform for uh, ERP solutions. ERP, I mean here as an enterprise resource planning software. So like, uh, uh, like SAP and this uh, from Microsoft, uh, we have uh, Dynamics, so that is an ERP uh, from Microsoft. And we, and, uh, we have ma 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 many other ERP solutions. So ERP is basically used by different enterprises, uh, organizations for their uh, uh, supply chain manufacturing and financial uh, uh, needs. So here uh, Power Platform or Power App is, uh, is used to build apps basically to cater to a wider audience like the whole organization or for their businesses. So that's where um, Power Apps uh, fill the gap. So how many of you have used Power Apps in your organization like internally or Nice. Then we will have uh, some interesting uh, slides where I will be able to tell you like, where this Power Apps uh, fit in the whole uh, canvas of uh, various apps that I mentioned. So, so this uh, this about me. So I basically I have completed my MBA. I am more into the business side uh, than the technical side. And uh, so I also I mean after completing my MBA and then. I worked on the supply chain and manufacturing domains of the uh, in catering to the building solutions for supply chain and manufacturing uh, functions of the organizations. And uh, by the course of work, I also uh, gave up uh, technical stuff and then I'm a solution architect at the Yeah, so throughout my experience, I have been working with Microsoft products. Say, when I started my career, uh, so there was only .NET, uh, I mean, when you, when you wanted to use any app, or any solution apart from the uh, the enterprise resource planning software. We used to build uh, solutions on .NET, but now we have moved into cloud. And last four, we have four or five years. This Azure, Microsoft Azure is gaining momentum, and now uh, I've been using Power Platform, Power Apps, uh, in the course of my work very extensively. So I have, uh, I have my experience is implementing ERP in different uh, companies for different industries in supply chain and manufacturing. So now I am going to uh, like give, tell, uh, tell an experience of uh, how I built the Power App using the, the conference and uh, giving the details of architectural, from the architectural point of view. So in my app, I used uh, the ERP solution, that is the Dynamics ERP, and then uh, this is the Power App. So Power App is the kind of like uh, power platform. So previously it was called, uh, so Power App is not a new uh, in the market. Previously, it was got called as uh, custom relations, CR, customer CRM software. Then it has got rebranded as Power uh, Power App after it has been hosted in cloud. That is Azure. So my ERP is also in cloud, and Power App is also in cloud. And then there is a database uh, layer called uh, Dataverse. So this is uh, like uh, uh, being marketed as a, a standalone database which can cater to different uh, uh, applications of enterprise wide. Uh, uh, Applications from Microsoft. So this is my database, which is used, which is used for storing the data that I'm going to uh, process in the Power App. And then, and next, uh, these are the connections on how the data flows between my Dynamics ERP and Power App. So <coughs> here, uh, I used the concept of the technology called dual write. So dual write is actually a, uh, a technology which is developed by Microsoft, and it is only uh, native to this Dynamics ERP. Uh, people would have used Microsoft uh, Dynamics ERP. Uh, they would have known this uh, terminology. So also dual write is used to uh, like push and pull data between the Dynamics ERP and the, uh, the Power App. So Power App and Dynamics ERP sits in the cloud. And this technology is a uh, native technology. So no coding, data, no coding required. It's a low code, no code solution. So you can get the data from the Dynamics ERP moved into the Power Apps. And uh, after uh, say processing, uh, after doing some uh, data processing, uh, uh, doing some process here, the data can be pushed back to the Dynamics ERP uh, using the dual write. Also, I used uh, 
uh, the, the other uh, way of communication that is through business events and then I used a, a Azure logic, logic apps to manipulate the data and then send it from Dynamics AFP. So the basic idea of building this app is I wanted to uh, do some uh, like uh, a business process like a manufacturing process uh, or a kind of like a gateway basically in the, in the power app. So power app generally people use app because it is very user friendly. It doesn't give you a lot of details for the user who wants to use. It, it can be the, the screen can be customized and there are a lot of advantages of using app rather than a dynamics ERP solution page or the form they call where it gives you it, it overwhelms the user with a lot of information that is not required by the user. So when you use that, what is this dynamics ERP? That is the enterprise resources planning software from Microsoft. So it is called Dynamics. Is it uh, just like SAP? Dynamic three sixty five. D three sixty five. Correct. So yeah. So my my uh, idea of using this app is uh, so it can be given to any user in the company like the transporter who is going to use this app for uh, for making his gate entry, or it can be given to the manufacturer or manufacturing operator who can use this app and then who can uh, do the business process. Yeah. So what is the significance of Dual write means then request and just close. It's not like it's not like an API. So you can easily configure this. Dual write is a technology which is given to Microsoft. So it is a low code no code solution. So it is just a configurable. You can set which tables needs to be uh, moved. Uh, the data has to be moved from between the dynamics D365 power apps. You can just set it up and data flows between the uh, dynamics tables and then the data was tables. Support. In terms of data, I can set up this build. Correct. So, will it be real time or offline? It will be a real, near to real time. So, it will be nearly synchronous data. So, adapter plus, uh, the, I mean, is not only adapter, it's also considering the real tables or anything. It's need to transfer. Yeah, the data is real time transfer between the app and the data. And uh, so, I use business events uh, uh, because I need to trigger some uh, data that flows that from the ERP. So I do it on a click of a button on the software or the ERP, I need to trigger some of the uh, data. So I use uh, business events and then from the business event uh, uh, is connected to this uh, logic apps in the Azure. So logic apps do the messaging part and then the data is sent to the power apps. Basically the data, uh, the data which, I, which I transfer between the app and the database, it, it can be classified into master data and transactional data. So master data will be like my uh, one-time data which has to be uh, transferred between the uh, Dynamics ERP to the Power App. Uh, like in a company, the master data can be a lot of things like your customers, your vendors, your items are all master data. And the second set of data that I try to uh, uh, transact uh, is called, that, uh, that I try to move is called the transactional data. So transactional data, uh, like transactional data is the data that is generated during a transaction like making a sales order or making a purchase order in a company. So the transaction happens and then I need to transfer the data. So for transactional data I use this business event. So when I click when I make a transaction, when I post a sales order or so, uh, I trigger a business event. So business event is a, uh, uh, it, it, it is a terminology which is native to this Dynamics 365 ERP. So it is like a web book. So when you uh, trigger any event, uh, when you click any button, uh, the, the business event captures that uh, uh, event and then it sends the data it, uh, to the logic app. So I use, a, I use this for the transactional data, basically. Yeah. So this is my, uh, like, uh, the data exchange uh, uh, format that I use. So for master data, it, is, it will be from ERP to the app and transactional data, so transactional data, uh, there are some transactional data which are generated in the ERP that is like the sales order which can be sent to the app uh, and then we can do a further processing on the app and then there are some transactions which can be originated in the app and then sent back to the ERP. So transaction data are both in ERP as well as in the app. And uh, so the third point is a very, uh, very important point which I uh, like, uh, used to emphasize. Uh, so whenever you send data, so one, one database has to be like a master database and the other database has to be like a slave. Meaning uh, you should not give the permission or you should not uh, able to uh, update the data in the, uh, in the, in the uh, database which you are uh, using just to uh, see the data or just uh, like the data database. 
because this if you modify the data then the then there will be a difference between the master data that is ERP data and the and the app data so the database the database database is like a slave database it just receives the data uh, from the uh, ERP database and uh, and it cannot be it, there is only read only access so this is for the master data and transactional data uh, transactional data so data generated in that so when you are making when you are making using that you can uh, do some uh, like uh, process, processing of a gate entry also. So there you generate transactions from the app. So those app data can be sent to the ERP. So basically the ERP is like a, the master uh, the master database. The ERP database is going to be the master database. And the app is used only for uh, certain business processes. And uh, when you generate the report or when the, uh, uh, when, when the reporting is uh, to be generated from the whole organization, so we have to generate it from the ERP database. So that is the data uh, uh, architecture uh, point of uh, from point of view from the data. So that is how the app is going to be. So what if, as you were saying, there is a global report solution. What happens if your system is down? Maybe your target or source. How do you do the mechanism? Correct. So when the system is down or when there is a low, low uh, net connectivity is poor. So there is a uh, this dual write as I showed you. So you can trigger that uh, dual write uh, like after your system is up and running, you can trigger that uh, dual write uh, correction to uh, to be re-triggered so that the transactions, the data that has been uh, I mean, the transaction data which has been from the power app can be sent back. To Actually, uh, as a safer side, we have developed we have what we did is we created a log page. So whichever data we are sending into the app, we are uh, we are capturing it in the form as a log transactional log. So if something goes uh, haywire, so that log we can uh, uh, yeah use a log page to send the data from the near dynamics app to the power app. So that uh, this is the the dual rate needs to only see that log and then it has to be created. What is dual rate? Uh, yeah, dual rate is a technology. So it is a it, just like an API. So API is used to Transfer data between one application to another application. Can be simple write. It can be called simple write. Why we are calling dual write? Both the directions. Writing from both the directions. So it can write into the ERP database from the power app. Why is why is it worse? So this database is unique. It is the same like this. It will be the same. Data was right. Yeah. yeah, I have a slide for it. So I will give a question and the answer will be okay. How much trigger this? Do you like when you write something to the table that time? Yes. So master data is basically when you enter the master and the table is getting modified, it will trigger. And when it is modified outside, it will be triggered. Yeah, so dual write is an out of box technology, Microsoft Office uh, 365 app. Yeah. It provides a bidirectional integration between the this is the ERP yeah, Dynamics Dynamics ERP yeah, is called Dynamics 365 FN Drop and the Dataverse. So yeah, this is from the Microsoft. Uh, it's a it's a technology is from Microsoft Dual Drive and it's a low cost low cost solution. Uh, it's tightly tightly coupling the the ERP solution. So we can use uh, all the other ERP also, but the Dynamics ERP the connectors are natively built. So there is an advantage because you get sometimes something out of the box. So dual write uh, it supports uh, both bulk data push, like you can connect dual write between two databases and push the data at once, all at once, or it can be integral like uh, uh, incremental push. So incremental push when you make any transaction. So after the transaction is uh, posted, the data can be pushed. So both bulk data, bulk data. Uh, push and then uh, incremental push is uh, supported by dual rate. And uh, dual rate of, of, uh, supports offline mode also, like uh, as uh, server asking. So if something goes wrong, uh, dual rate can be re, -tri -re triggered and then the, the, the connection can be uh, brought, back, brought back live. And it is near to real, uh, real, real time data update, so it is a synchronous and it is a low code solution. So uh, basically, like people. Both uh, have to be the same network? Both has to be in the same network? Cloud. So, no, both has to be in the same data center network. Both are uh, all on the cloud. It has to be within the boundary of the network. Okay. 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 Okay.
data bus. So this was the second component. First, uh, uh, the data bus uh, that is used in the app. So data bus is the database that is uh, that the app our app uses. And uh, data bus. So data bus is a, uh, a data bus. Uh, it is like a ready-made database which is uh, provided by the Microsoft. So in that uh, data verse, you can have, uh, uh, the out of the box, you can have uh, like customer table. And uh, there are some standard fields which are provided by the Microsoft. Like, say for a customer, you can, what are the standard fields of a customer master? Uh, it could be the address, or it could be the contact person, or it could be the uh, the, the VAT registration number. So all the, uh, likewise, you can have standard uh, tables that are available in the database out of the box. So when you wanted to connect any app with the Dataverse, it is very easy because the Dataverse itself has some out-of-the-box tables uh, like your customers, items, renters and uh, much more. Or if you wanted to make a, like a, a custom or you can create a custom table, uh, spin a custom table uh, in the Dataverse, that is also very easy. That you can create a own table with the required fields. Uh, for example, for my gate entry process, I can say uh, create a table with the details like uh, what is the gate entry number, what is the driver number, what is the RE, uh, sorry, truck number. So likewise, I can uh, create a table out of the uh, like custom table very easily using the data verse. And uh, so this is the architecture uh, diagram for data verse. And it uses the publisher and subscriber model. And it can be, so data verse can be accessed using all the applications. We can use it to mobile, uh, web, tab, uh, SaaS application. And the dataverse uh, can the data lies in dataverse, and then these can be used for uh, manipulating the data, creating a logic out of it, like your uh, logic apps, your power automate, uh, your power apps. We are we are building app. Basically, we are using the dataverse and then this uh, this same architecture. And then we saw a business event. So just to go back, yeah. So if you, if you see this diagram, we have seen about what is the dual rate and uh, we have seen about what is data works and uh, so now we will look into the business event and then logic logic apps so business event uh, as i was uh, mentioning it's a mechanism by which notifications can be sent to external systems so it's a like a web book whenever a process is getting a, a trigger in the ERP application you can uh, fire this business event and this business event can expose some data to the external systems. Uh, so you can also uh, expose uh, like uh, the customer data, the item data to the external systems. The external system here I mean is the Azure logic apps in the app which I, which I built. Uh, so, so basically when we are running a business process, so business process as I see is the for example, purchase to pay cycle is the business process. Where I will do the uh, start from the purchase code and then the purchase order and then the uh, purchase invoice and then the payment to the vendor. So this is a business process. So it's a workflow. Workflow. workflow, yes. So in this workflows, we can like, have business events getting triggered from wherever we want it. Uh, so that with using this uh, business events uh, that is supported by Amex ERP. And then uh, that data can be consumed by uh, we can have a messaging service, as in Azure messaging service, like your event grid or your logic app. Even you can use uh, Power Automate. Uh, this is also a no local local solution, Microsoft Power Automate, which can consume this uh, business event, and then you can do the, uh, uh, the logic and return in these uh, messaging services, which is provided in the Azure. Right. So, I use logic apps for uh, the data manipulation which are sent to the business event and then storing, uh, so logic app what it does is it, it, it gets the data from the business event and it stores the data, it manipulates, it, it does, a, it creates a, this year all the logic, the business logic like uh, to validate whether the customer is a foreign customer or a local customer so we can write whatever logic that is required from the business point of view with the, uh, this logic app. So this is a logic, uh, uh, all the logics, business logics are included in this logic app and after the, uh, the data that is required uh, is, uh, uh, is manipulated by this logic app, it, is, it will be stored with the data works. So this is what this is, uh, also the alternatives are, you can use Power Platform workflow. So Power Platform is also uh, supports uh, this kind of like, uh, uh, manipulation of data from the business events and it uh, 
stores the data, resulted data in the metaverse. Which language? How do we write the rules? Is it some JSON or how? No, it is a uh, so visual editor. <coughs> visual editor, yes. Okay, so it's just a visual editor. Like, can we get an option by uploading JSON or something like that to create two or not? It's a robot robot session. Let's say somebody is modifying and they want to review the old versus new. Does that provide that? Is it like in code I can review the default if it's not the original version? So, yeah, we are meant to do Versions will be maintained. So, you can compare between the older version and the recent version. So, it follows this Azure DevOps pipeline. Arm template, yes. So these, uh, so okay, so we have a lot of options in front of us. Like uh, we can use a lot of options, but why Power Apps? So here I have like put some points. Why, uh, in which context Power Apps can be used for developing your solution? So I, I have given so Power Apps can be used in much places, much more. Like uh, I have seen Power Apps being used by uh, the enterprises for their. Uh, Say within the company, like uh, HR department can create, can create a power app for uh, different reasons. Reasons maybe uh, uh, even your Teams app, which Microsoft has released. So uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, Teams app, which is getting built based on the power app platform. Is a power app platform. My uh, like, uh, the point of putting this is how we are going to what what points you have to have in mind when you are using a power app solution which is getting uh, used along with the enterprise resources kind of solution. So first point is so whenever you wanted uh, okay uh, so enterprise resources planning as I was saying it was used in the, uh, in the enterprise wide context. So each enterprise each industry uh, each company. Uh, we have a different needs like how their software, how their uh, billing software, how their uh, uh, sales and purchase, their inventory software uh, should be there. So all the all the uh, I mean the, the software which the uh, like SAP or this Oracle or Microsoft gives, it cannot be uh, like the product will not be uh, having features which the each company requires. So something has to be. Uh, customized for the company, for the, for the particular company or for the particular industry. So using this power app solution makes the customization very easy. So your effort, your developmental effort and the testing effort and also from the architectural point of view, uh, developing a solution in the power apps when compared to the developing the solution directly in the ERP uh, platform is very easy to do it in the power apps. And uh, second point is Business logic can be easily customized. So maybe uh, every company will have its own business logic. For example, you take any manufacturing company which uh, which does the, uh, the making of these fabrics. So they will have a, a different uh, uh, business logic. Like how they how they keep the inventory of their uh, like crops, whether uh, they keep the full rectangular size or they keep the they maintain the part rectangular size or cut shape. So they have, they have their own business logic, how the how their items has to be stored in the internet. So this uh, power app solution, uh, so based on uh, power app platform, uh, the business logic can be easily built for uh, the their very company business needs. So yeah, so this was made, uh, uh, I mean now we have a, a like, uh, the sales channel which is uh, multi multi chain sales channels are there. The sales are being done in the in the uh, like through the uh, through the e-commerce or we have the sales which is being done through the uh, 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 retail stores. So the business logics will change as per the uh, like based on the complexity which the uh, company uh, operates by how the company operates. So we can use this power app in so in situations where uh, we are not able to use the customize their standard ERP solution. So, complex business logic can be built on the power apps. The third point is, uh, uh, yeah. So, dataverse, as I was mentioning, the dataverse has standard tables as well as it has, uh, like we can create custom uh, tables uh, easily with the dataverse. So, it, uh, the dataverse supports both. Like, uh, it, it supports some standard uh, tables which can be used out of the box. Uh, for a custom, for a very complex business needs, you can create uh, custom tables also. And uh, so leveraging the power of power apps. So power apps, uh, uh, you, uh, it gives the ability to see uh, like uh, 
for the media files or graphics. So visual data can be easily seen in the power apps. So this also makes a uh, like a, a, a winning point to use to use a power app solution for our uh, ERP enterprise resources planning software. And uh, the last point I mentioned it as a last point, but it is uh, from the cost perspective. This is one of the most important point. So. There is no additional loss. There, uh, there is no additional uh, license cost for using the program. So once you have bought the license for Microsoft ERP, the, the Dynamics software, so you can use Power Apps uh, without any additional cost because there is no license cost for it. For how many users? It supports uh, as many as users you have for the Dynamics ERP. So it supports same number of users for the uh, Power Platform. And uh, so this power platform is hosted in Azure. So this is uh, so since it is maintained by the Microsoft Azure and Microsoft, so we will have easy availability and uh, the data. So this is one of the most uh, uh, like uh, important point because from the enterprise point of view, the data that is being stored is the organizational data. So since the organizational data is getting stored, the data privacy loss comes into picture. Like we have a separate. Uh, uh, loss for Europe for US government and also for India we are, going, we are getting the uh, data privacy loss. So this is fully taken care by the Azure platform Microsoft. So using Power Apps we need not worry about these points. And uh, so it has surface percentage 99.98% percentage available that is what Microsoft says. So if there is any downtime or uh, 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 the, uh, people are not able to use Power Apps because of uh, 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 yeah, we, uh, yeah. So the, that's that. that the, 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 the platform layer is for supported by the Microsoft. So if the Microsoft uh, SLA is 98.99 percentage. So availability, then it should not be a problem when you are building power apps for the enterprise-wide uh, usage. And you can also use the service health check. So you can see the health. Uh, this is also out of the box. You can make use of that uh, uh, service health check functionality to see how your apps is performing, to see how people are using it and then what is the traffic inside the, being used for our apps. And uh, then, uh, yes, so the the, uh, the data size that is supported in the database, the, the data works, you can store up to 4 TB of uh, data volume in the data verse tables. So this is more than what the ERP database supports. This is one of the selling points. Because ERP database only supports still 1 TB. So after 1 TB is uh, gone, then you have to uh, maybe archive the data or refresh the data. But uh, your database can support up to 4 TB of data. And uh, the standard data archive, so once uh, your limit is reached, uh, so data archive, for data archive, uh, the feature is provided by the Microsoft out of the box. So, so there is no uh, uh, I mean extra effort or additional effort that we have to take for, for creating this feature data archiving. And the application lifecycle management. So application lifecycle management of our platform. So this is what the, the, the pipelines, uh, development and the, the database, uh, creating the pipelines to put it into the different database, development database. So this is also, uh, somebody was asking the version control. So this is also automatically taken care with the Azure DevOps. So we have the Azure DevOps and the, uh, the GitHub is also, uh, Microsoft also supports GitHub uh, actions for using, for doing this uh, uh, AMM. Practice. And um, so these uh, points I put uh, so to take care when you are creating a app in Power Platform. So maybe this could be like your uh, points which you, which you could uh, make as a checklist and take care whether these uh, points are being taken care of your app. So master data and transaction data that is having the source in the dynamic CRP will have to be sent and updated in the dataverse during the creation date, update, deletion operation. The meaning of it is, uh, uh, as, we are, as we said, uh, we are sending uh, some data from the ERP to the, uh, to the Power Apps, the database of the Power Apps. So we should make sure that uh, what we, it should not be only one time sent. So we are sending any record. Uh, so we are sending at the time of creation. But we should also make, uh, make sure that the data is also getting sent at the time of the update or delete operation also. And uh, second point is, uh, the transactional data that is generated in the power apps needs to be pushed to the database CRP for processing in the business process. So, transactional data, 
So this can some transactions uh, can be generated in the Power Apps in the Betaverse database. So this data has to be sent back to the ERP. So because ERP is going to be the final repository of all the organizational data. That could be for reporting purpose or uh, for uh, uh, like the whole organizational view. The data in the ERP is important. So uh, this point also has to be taken care of when you are creating any transactions in the uh, Dataverse tables in the Power App locally that has to be sent back to the ERP database. And, uh, so third point. Sir, there is a Power app for the manager is going to both are both need to signalize, right? No, this is the maximum size supported. Okay. Okay. So, you have maximum size in your power app. Here, the left side, is only one DB. Okay. So, actually, I have not seen a case where no. customers have reached up to 1 DB. Not seen a case, that's a different thing. But if what if? This is actually a marketing point for the Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a thing. This they will increase the ERP cloud size going forward. So they will they will increase this size going forward based on the customer's usability. The next release or so, the ERP database will be increased. Once the people start using the power platform. <laughs> so the third point here, so you have to make sure that you don't duplicate the business logics in the ERP and then the power apps. Meaning you have to you will, you have to have a power app for doing one particular function. For example, you are printing a power app, for example, you are to maintain the gate entry of the persons for entering into the your factory. Uh, uh, this 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 is the this, this particular function uh, may not be there in the ERP, so that's why you are printing the power app. So when you are printing the power app, you should not build a logic which is uh, which is a duplication of the logic in the ERP. Uh, so uh, you, you should try to minimize it because when there is a duplication of the logic, then the data will get mismatched. So uh, for example, you can, you have a you, you have a logic where you uh, for example you uh, uh, mark the attendance of drivers in the in the power app as well as in the ERP, for example. So when you have when there is a duplication of logic. Uh, so, so you do it from the power app and then the data is stored locally in the dataverse and uh, uh, and you do it again in the ERP so there is going to be the mismatch of data so we should try to uh, avoid the duplication of uh, this logic uh, between the two different applications no, sorry, sorry to, uh, is it again an avoidance or is it a strict rule? no, try to minimize it no, minimize it is on somebody doing it then that should be next data right you have to yeah, avoid the data right they will have to do, it, uh, do the data manipulation. So we know that uh, there is going to be a duplication of logic. For example, they are doing one process in the ERP, and then the data is getting uh, changed. So the, they have to do it again in the Power App so that the data is being matched in the ERP. There is going to be a duplication. So for that purpose, to avoid duplications, uh, double work, uh, what we describe is to minimize the duplication. The data stored in the dataverse, so, uh, so this is again the follow-up point for that. So what we said is, the data stored in the dataverse should not be different compared to the ERP data. So, yeah. so how this is coming is, when there is a duplication of uh, business logic, the data can be different. Uh, so we should try to avoid that. And uh, in the power app, so this is a very important uh, I mean, uh, feature that can be used for power apps. We have role based access control. Meaning you can, uh, when, you, when a particular person is using the power app, he can be given a particular role. So like for example, uh, here when, uh, when I'm uh, using, creating an app for my data entry process, I can create a role like uh, uh, the security person or the, uh, the security manager. So uh, just like uh, in any other application, you have this role based access control. Uh, the same roles can be assigned to different users. So two or three users can be given this uh, role. And they can uh, say, they, they get to uh, see all the pages, they get to have all the permissions that are pertaining to this uh, role, whatever role that you are creating. And uh, this also is an important point which I have not come across in the software and uh, it's also a very, very interesting and a very uh, weird point which is asked by different enterprises. Like, uh, say if I have a role and I am uh, in operating in uh, 
when I'm using a power app, I, I have a role like a, as a kind of a, like a security uh, manager. So the data I can restrict. So using the power apps, I can restrict what data I can see, see in my, my login. Uh, like I, whether I, I should be able to see the whole organizational wide uh, uh, gate at least uh, with my role, with my user role. Or I can see only the data which I have created. Like I have created data trees, uh, data uh, gate trees. Whether I should be able to see only that, or I can see the business unit level, the business unit wise. Like, like you can, you have a different departments in your company. Like what is your uh, manufacturing uh, warehouse A, manufacturing warehouse B. So you can uh, restrict the data that the power up shows the data for uh, a particular warehouse. So. Maybe a warehouse located in Bangalore, there is another warehouse located in Mysore. And you can see organization wide means I think all the warehouses in Bangalore, Mysore, you can see all the data at one in the same power app. Or you can restrict based on uh, say warehouse in Bangalore, uh, the, the person can based on the load, you can see the data that are created on the, uh, the particular warehouse. Or thirdly, I can see only the data uh, address which I have created, not uh, by the person who has created by the other user with the same values. So these are uh, these data and then the roles can also be easily configured. And then uh, so this finally this where we can use this power power app solution. So generally I have seen like uh, people uh, the manufacturing floor, the shop floor, production floor, they wanted to say uh, load down the output, how much output they have uh, done on the, on the completion of the shift. How much material they have consumed. So there, there is a uh, uh, good uh, demand for making use of this power app. So power app solution can be uh, created for this manufacturing process. And uh, it can so you can have different manufacturing process. It supports as I was mentioning this power app can be easily customized for different projects. So you can uh, maybe uh, from uh, discrete to the uh, continuous manufacturing, we can build power apps. And uh, you can also build power apps uh, for this warehouse. So there are a lot of warehouses which uh, uh, many e-commerce companies has. And these warehouses, people also like, uh, uh, I mean, they don't sit on a laptop and do the work, so they be on the uh, ground. So they will be more, they can usually use this handheld devices and then the staffs for making the transaction. So there, because power apps is easily uh, adaptable to this uh, different client, uh, desktop, web client, and also the staff client and the handheld device. Power app solution can be did, can be used by the warehouse person for doing the different uh, processes, warehouse processes. You have this hub and scope uh, model, you have this milk run. So these processes in your, uh, like for example, is based on warehouse. So the warehouse person can easily operate the device from this, uh, uh, using the power app. And uh, it can also be used by transportation logic, logistics drivers. So this transportation logistics uh, function, so, because uh, I mean, in the same example, the e-commerce companies, uh, so lot of lot of goods are being carried by different logistics operators. So to track the shipments or, to, or if you are getting, you are able to track the shipment of Amazon on your website. So uh, this power app solution can be used in those places which can be used by the transporters and logistics uh, persons to, to, to track to track the shipment, like where the shipment is available and how much uh, uh, delay time has been notified. So the power app solutions can be used at, at that context. And there are many, many more because of uh, this uh, advent of hardware. The software is also getting, uh, uh, we have tabs and now the mobile client. So to cater to them, uh, the, the power app solution can be made use of in, uh, in different business contexts. Yes. So that's the end of my presentation. The end of the this code is there, but uh, from the configuration point of view, like, like as a business user, I can do it myself uh, without a help of a developer. Out of the box. Yeah, so if you can you check out the Okay. Okay. Write the code, right? 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 Okay. Write the code, right